March 22. Exodus 33. John 12. Proverbs 9. Ephesians 2. One cannot understand Exodus chapter 33 without grasping two things. One, the tabernacle had not yet been built. The tent of meeting pitched outside the camp, verse 7, where Moses went to seek the face of God, must therefore have been a temporary arrangement. Two, the theme of judgment trails on from the wretched episode of the golden calf. God says he will not go with his people. He will merely send an angel to help them. Verses 1 through 3. So Moses continues with his intercession. Verses 12 and 13. While dwelling on the fact that this nation is the Lord's people, Moses now wants to know who will go with him. Aaron is so terribly compromised. Moses himself still wants to know and follow God's ways. God replies, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Verse 14. But how does this square with the Lord's threat to do no more than send an angel, to keep away from the people so that he does not destroy them in his anger? So Moses presses on. If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Angel or no? Verse 15. What else finally distinguishes this fledgling nation from all other nations but the presence of the living God? Verse 16. And the Lord promises, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Verse 17. Although Moses continues to pray along these lines in the next chapter, chapter 34, verse 9, the glorious fact is that God no longer speaks of abandoning his people. When the tabernacle is built, it is installed in the midst of the twelve tribes. Three brief reflections. One, These chapters exemplify the truth that God is a jealous God, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, and chapter 34, verse 14. For one human being to be jealous of another is sinful. We are finite, and we are called to be stewards of what we have received, not jealous of others. But for God not to be jealous of his own sovereign glory and right would be a formidable failure. He would be disowning his own unique significance as God implicitly conceding that his image-bearers have the right to independence. 2. God is said to relent about 40 times in the Old Testament. Such passages demonstrate his personal interactions with other people. When all 40 are read together, several patterns emerge, including the integration of God's relenting with his sovereign will. 3. Wonderfully, when Moses asks to see God's glory— God promises to display his goodness. Chapter 33, verses 18 and 19. It is no accident that the supreme manifestation of the glory of God in John's gospel is in the cross.